There are many categories of people who are so judgmental by nature. Being able to judge a situation a few thousand generations ago was a matter of life or death. Our judgment dictated how long we'd survive in the world. All those generations ago, we were equipped with a brain that was perfectly adapted to its environment and our survival in those days. Unlike today, we didn't have the luxury of time to think. We needed to act fast or become lunch. What's not so moral is when you make an instant assessment of someone based on their clothes, hairstyle, or the way they walk. You're being conscientiously judgmental and filtering what you experience through your list of assumptions, beliefs, values, and expectations. Assessing that person against the list you have stored in your mind and then assigning them a label as either good or bad is problematic. The problem is that because we have an inbuilt bias toward negativity, they're more likely to be classified as bad. This doesn't mean evil, but it means different. Judgment is a very individual thing. It's completely different for everyone depending upon what's on their list. Being judgmental is something you do, not something that happens. Therefore, like complaining, it's possible to stop yourself from doing it, although it requires practice and a bit of time. Don't fool yourself into thinking that being judgmental just happens to you, as that's simply not true. In reality, it's not. It's an ego-generated delusion, and it will keep you stuck. This story will emphasize the bad consequences that resulted from wrong and untrue judgments. Make sure to stay until the end and subscribe for more stories like that. There once was a woman named Karen. She worked as a police officer. Karen's father was also an officer. She loved the job, and this kind of job enabled her to show her power. She was such a selfish and snobby woman. She was highly arrogant towards people, usually showing an insulting attitude to people who believed they were better, smarter, or more important than others. In fact, being arrogant and haughty is a bad thing. Arrogance is a naive attitude that causes ignorance and hatred. It's detrimental to all dimensions of life. Karen's mother was always upset because of her daughter's excessive pride and haughtiness. She advised her, saying, Try to keep in mind, there's always someone who's smarter than you, stronger than you, has more than you, knows more than you, and can do it better than you. Confidence adorned with humility keeps you open to listening and learning. Openness to receiving and sharing with others without prejudice repels arrogance. Be aware that your way of dealing with others can bring you so many problems. For example, people will refuse to work with you. You may cause trouble at work because your arrogance would cloud your judgment. You'll lack the ability to ask for help. You may also face overinflated confidence in your abilities, which can be dangerous. Actually, what Karen's mother warned her daughter about happened. Karen faced a very complicated problem in her work as a police officer, and she was about to be fired. One morning, Karen was on her way to work as usual, and her colleague, Rookie, accompanied her. Suddenly, a one-year-old girl appeared. She asked her father to play with her scooter outside the house. Her father agreed, but advised her to stay around the front of the house and not to go too far. The girl went outside to ride her scooter. While Karen was driving her car, she saw the little girl on the street all of a sudden and without any introduction. She stopped the car, and Rookie was astonished by her actions. He asked why she stopped the car. She answered him because she saw a suspicious girl riding her scooter. Rookie said that this girl couldn't be suspicious as she looked like she was nine years old, so she was too young to commit any crimes. Karen talked with Rookie in a very arrogant voice, saying that it was not his matter, and that he should learn from her and not give her any further information. Karen appeared as if she had all the knowledge in the world. She didn't want to receive help from anybody as she thought that she was perfect and had no imperfections. She proudly assumed that she had a wide experience in her job. She assured Rookie that she was right in everything she said, so she could discover all the suspicious people very easily. Karen started doing her job by asking the girl about her name and address. Rookie revealed that Karen was wasting time and all she was doing was useless. Karen proudly asked him to remain silent. This portrayed that Karen's selfishness made her forget to respect her colleagues and treated Officer Rookie in an unacceptable manner. She treated him as if he were her servant and not an officer like her. 
She continued terrifying the young child with her strange questions and wearisome attitude. Karen caused the girl to experience a great deal of fear. Officer Rookie told Karen to stop her nonsense as she made the girl scared. Karen didn't care about the man's comment and ran after the girl. She handcuffed the girl harshly. The girl was crying heavily and begged Karen to let her free. Officer Rookie tried to prevent Karen from arresting the small child, but he failed. The girl's father heard the loud cry of his girl. He went out at once to see what was happening. Karen ordered him to stand back. The man was amazed at Karen's overconfidence. Officer Rookie declared that this man was a new captain. The man asked Karen to release his daughter. Karen got a little worried. However, she did not confess her vital mistake of arresting a small, innocent child. Instead, she lied and said that this girl was creating some kind of fear in the neighborhood and that Karen received a lot of complaints from neighbors complaining about the disturbance the girl caused. But Officer Rookie told the truth to Captain Alexander and the full story, starting from where Karen stopped the girl thinking she was suspicious until the end when she handcuffed her. Finally, arrogant Karen confessed her guilt. Alexander rebuked her for terrifying his small child and causing her a bad experience she would never forget. Karen had to apologize to the captain. The man ordered them to go to the station and he seemed as if he decided to give Karen her due punishment there. This can help anyone to understand the message that it's very wrong to judge a book by its cover. Rash judgments often lose. Unless you're sure of your thought and you have proof to support it, don't take any hasty action that may harm you as a human being and ruin your future. After Karen realized that she was completely wrong and that this girl's father was the new captain, she was quite embarrassed and this was very obvious in her looks. In addition, the man insisted on punishing her and he might fire her from her work, which could ruin her future as a police officer. The sad thing is that these things do happen to innocent people because people are suspicious of them or because of racism. To be frank, Officer Karen should be fired from her 25-year-old job of being an officer. That girl is lucky to have a father who is the new captain. Karen was doing her job in a very wrong way. She was arresting innocent people, which was against the rules of being a police officer. She found her passion in doing so, as she could dominate people, which helped satisfy her arrogance. She felt happy only when she was superior to others, and had the right to rebuke them and accuse them of anything. Edwin Rookie served her with integrity. He was not a racist officer like Karen. He told the truth only and didn't want corruption. He strived to prevent Karen from exercising her racist behaviors. He never lied to the captain as Karen did. His main role was to help the audience realize that backing up false claims or acts of racism or haughtiness is not moral at all. Be loyal to what is right, even if you lose who is in the wrong. Edwin was not afraid of breaking his friendship with Karen when he told the captain about Karen's crime. All he was concerned about was being frank and honest. There are a lot of police officers who don't even know their responsibilities in dealing with people, particularly civilians. They don't deserve to be in the institutions. A great police officer should master some communication skills. Being able to communicate with others clearly and effectively is a must. Also, being able to listen to, reason with and relate to others is crucial. An officer obviously has to know the law, but they also have to know how to most effectively enforce it. You can't take every offense and arrest every offender. You'd be a terrible police officer like Karen. You cannot be friends with people on the street, but if you nuke your goodwill, people are going to let you in. Sometimes, the people you would have written off first provide you with the best information. An outstanding officer should be kind, especially to children. Karen was a cruel officer. She didn't pay attention to the girl's innocent childhood nor care about the girl's feelings. She kept fearing her with no mercy. An officer should also be selfless, unlike Karen, who saw herself as the best teacher in the world. A kind officer recognizes that you don't always have to write the ticket. Sometimes the ticket will make a bad situation worse. And that little bit of compassion can go a long way in making a difference in a person's life.